there YouTube, how are you all? I hope you're all looking after yourselves and keeping well. And welcome back to another micro adventure with me, Rambling Rachel. And in this video, you'll also see my friend Steph from Endurance Adventures. Do check out her channel. And we have returned to the scene of the crime. Six weeks ago, we were here in this very spot and we bailed, we headed back down the moorland into Grindleford and checked into an alehouse, which was very nice by the way. Um, but the weather six weeks later is much nicer. Just to clarify, the reason why we bailed wasn't because it was dangerous. It wasn't because it was a storm. There was no storm six weeks ago. It was just really, really sodden from the amount of rainfall and trying to pitch up in really thick water on the ground. Not much fun, let's be honest. Nobody wants to wake up in a puddle. So we made the right decision and decided to call it quits. But six weeks later, got blue skies temperatures up to about 12 and a half degrees today pretty warm for mid-april and yeah i've got good vibes about it so stick around oh and yes i've got a new piece of kit to show you i uh, can't wait to show you that a little bit later so yes it's almost time to pitch up it's wigwam time wigwam time wigwam in her natural environment, preparing to graze. Her tool of choice is the jet boil, and I'd imagine she's about to make herself a latte and a pasta. Is that correct? Can I have a latte? Yeah, it was a favourite latte. Yay! There we go, the wigwams are up. Mine is the car key one which is a 3FUL, um, no it's not, Steph is using the 3FUL Langshan 1 and I'm using the Nightcat trekking pole tent both with a three season inner. It is now mid-April and it's fairly mild, in fact it's been quite uh, pleasant in terms of weather this week. We have been very very fortunate and um, we're probably going to get some rain tomorrow but nothing too bad, nothing that's going to concern us too much. But yes, that's what we're, we're in tonight. I haven't used the Nightcat for a little while, actually. The last time I was out camping, I used the Luna Solo um, back in February, and the condensation in that tent was horrendous. Um, so I decided to bring the Nightcat one out instead and do a bit of a comparison and see which one works better. Um, it's heading up to about dusk now. Um, sunset's around 8 p.m., which is nice. And then sunrise is around 6am tomorrow morning and hopefully we might get a bit of a sunrise but knowing our luck it will probably be a pea soup. But either way, I mean check out these beautiful views, absolutely gorgeous aren't they? This is what the, the Peak District is all about. <laughs> so yes, very shortly we'll be sorting out our bedding and then thinking about getting some dinner on and um, yeah, see how we go. I've got lovely views over to Wynn Hill. The Great Ridge, Lewes Hill, Hollands Cross, Mam Tor, Russia Pedge, then further in the background, the Kinder Scout Plateau. Brilliant views up here, absolutely breathtaking. And it feels so good to be back out in the hills and the moorlands again. Are you a Peak District hiker or camper? Is it your favourite national park? If so, let me know in the comments below. Or what is your national park? I'd imagine it might be the one that you visit every year on your holiday or maybe it's the one nearest to you. Let me know what your, your favourite national park is. I mean, they're all really brilliant, aren't they? Um, can't really have a favourite, but for me it's a peak because it's the closest and it's only a two hour drive from Northamptonshire. What's on the menu tonight? So I was at my local outdoor retailer earlier today and I came across this and I couldn't resist. I was really curious. I really wanted to give this a go. Now I have had some meals from Adventure Food before. Some I've really liked and some I've not been overly keen on, but I was really intrigued by pasta al salmon. Um, I thought I'd give it a go because I actually really do like salmon and I love pasta and I haven't tried this one before so I thought yeah why not it's one of those hydrated meals where you boil water up pour it inside leave it for 10 minutes 
allow the, the substance inside to um, hydrate again and then it's good to go just add water 600 calories so that is a good substantial meal and it cost me i think it was about five pounds 75 i got a discount with my student card these meals are normally about seven pounds seven pounds 50 so they're not cheap but you get a good calorie content and it's fairly nutritious and i'm going to boil my water up using my trangia um as you can probably tell i'm going through a bit of a trangia phase at the moment haven't given up using gas cooking altogether but I don't know, I just love using my trangia at the moment. So let's get that boiled up and get some mash on. What have you got for dinner? I've got some potless pot noodles. Potless pot noodles? Yeah, basically. Noodles like without a pot? Noodles with a bit of posher. Oh, so yes, yeah, Steph's going for the noodles tonight. Pot what flavour? I think the barbecue. Ooh, barbecue yeah. noodles, sounds very nice. So now the time is coming up to half past eight in the evening and it's still fairly light. Um, I'm quite surprised, but I'm not complaining. I'm absolutely loving it. The last couple of wild camps that Steph and I have done, we've had really bad weather conditions in terms of visibility and rain and not having nice views. So this is a real treat and I'm really excitable. I'm really just happy to be outdoors and enjoying the views and breathing in the fresh air. It's just great. You've been pulling faces behind the camera. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'll get her back later. <laughs> um, yeah, and the moon is out and ah, brilliant. I've just got those outdoory vibes going on. Um, yeah, so salmon pasta, let's go for it. Let's get the trangia boiling away. Here we go, water's almost boiled. Now let's see if we can find the oxygen pouch in there. Don't want to be eating that. Probably makes them very, very poorly. You get them in most of these dehydrated meals. Oh, it's hiding, Steph. No. Sometimes they're right at the top, and sometimes they're sort of buried. I don't know where this stick I am doing. Ah, there it is. Now my hand's covered in dehydrated pasta. Yes, make sure you always remove these. Do not eat them. Right. Remember, leave no trace. Don't leave your rubbish where you go camping. Right, now let's fill this up with some water. 350 mils to be exact. There's a bit more water in this than I need because I want to use some for my cup of tea. Now there's a little line in there. Can you see that line? That's as far as I want to go. No more or else it doesn't taste very nice. So we pour that in carefully, watching our fingers. There we go, got some nice water left over. Now that's going to take 10 minutes to soak through, so I'm just going to seal that back up like that, to keep the heat in. If it was a really cold night, I might put this inside my jacket as a bit of extra thermal installation, but I'm not going to. And then I'm just going to give it a good shake, because the worst thing is with these meals is when they're get the powdery bits at the bottom or the bits of pasta that don't take in the water and they're really crunchy and it's almost a bit too al dente so yeah we'll come back to that in 10 minutes give it a zhuzh and then i'll let you know if it's any good or not excellent <laughs> okay so now it's time to try the adventure food um pasta a saumon. i hope it's nice oh smell test Yep, that's good. And I did wait a full 10 minutes and a little bit more. Doesn't look too powdery. Can I, can I give you a camera shot of the food? Is it going to work without dropping it on the floor? There's a lot of food in there. It, it does feel substantial. There we go. Let's, let's give you a close up. Do you want a close up? I'm sure you know what pasta looks like, but you know, let's hope it's not powdery. There's quite a lot of steam coming off it. Let's try and find a bit of pasta in here. That has some salmon attached to it. I want to see more salmon. I'm sure it's there. Let's uh, mix it in a bit. Oh, there we go. I have to say, I really like it. This is probably one of the better adventure food meals I've had. 
Um, it's actually got some really nice flavour to it. I definitely have this one again. I know you don't want to sit there and watch me eating, so I'll come back to you in a little while. And this may seem a bit strange, but I've also got hot chocolate to accompany my pasta. You wouldn't do this at home, would you, in, in real life? You wouldn't drink hot chocolate and eat pasta and salmon, would you, Steph? Well, I might. <laughs> oh, there you go then. That's such a strange combination. <laughs> I'll come back to you a little bit later on. I'll be using the Ice Flame Down Quilt as my cover tonight as part of my sleep system. I'll take that out, give it an opportunity to loft up and that will keep me nice and toasty. That is my sleep system. I didn't bring my pillow with me this time. I just thought I'd probably just use my clothing bag and pop that under my head. That'll be sufficient. This evening I've chosen to go with the Uni Gear Comfy 3 sleeping pad with an R rating of 2. I prefer this one because it's rectangular, it's very comfortable. I tend to get a better sleep on it because it is wider than my mummy style sleeping bag. Um, yeah, that's what I'm in. Here we have my Novice World Camper collapsible table. I've had this for, for about three years now and it's still going strong. Um, it still comes out. And sometimes I like to flip it the other way and use it as a tray to put my bits and pieces in. Very convenient. But what I'm doing now is just making sure that all my pegs are in as much as they can be. There's enough tension in the material without putting too much strain on it. Make sure the guide lines are in a good position as well. I'm happy with that. So this is a nightcap trekking pole tent. Um, yeah, and Steph's in the Langshan. Are you happy with your pitch, Steph? yeah so there we go happy days so very shortly we'll think about bedding down for the night and then getting up just before sunrise which is approximately 10 to 6 in the morning that's what i've got in my vestibule and that's yeah <laughs> a bit messy at the minute but we'll sort that out eventually last orders at the bars ladies and gents it's gone half past 10 bedded down, tucked into my ice flame quilt. I can hear a bit of pitter patter from the rain above me on the canvas. Not a breath of air though, it's not windy at all, which is good. Completed my night admin, um, sorted out my clothes, got my Merino Peter Storm Merino base layers on. Um, sun dick down booties to keep my feet nice and toasty. And that's it, I've got no other layers on other than the base layers, the woolly hat and the sundicks. Um, I have got my down jacket with me but I haven't needed to, to wear that so far. I've managed to maintain um, my warmth really well but I do have a neck buff and I also have gloves and extra clothing if I need to layer up during the night as well as my north face fleece as well so all is good. Um, yep yeah, I haven't got anything else to say so I'll see you in the morning. Hopefully have a really good night's sleep, nice and restful. We'll find out later on whether I have um, found a, a flat-ish pitch. If I roll one way or another in the night, we'll see. At the moment, it feels like I've got it right. Not too bad, thankfully. Um, and everything's holding up. Okay, good night everyone, and I'll see you in the morrow. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Peak District. It's about 20 past five in the morning, half an hour until the sun is meant to rise. We've had a gentle pitter patter of rain all night, which started probably around, I don't know, around nine o'clock. Within the last hour, it has got a little bit heavier, which is typical camping weather for Steph and I. Um, but inside this little tent, I am all dry. I am all comfortable. No leakage. I have checked around the, the, the top of the tent and um, yeah, no, no condensation is dripping through. So it feels like the Nightcat is a better option than the Luna Solo. There you go. Um, which I'm pleased to report in terms of not having to worry about taking off loads of condensation. So now starts the slow process of waking up. 
getting dressed into our day gear, um, having a brew and then packing away in the wet. So it's going to be a waterproof kind of day, I think. Um, but we are going to go for a bit of a hike across the car walk and then up to Burbage Rocks, down and around into the grounds of the Longshore Estate, all the way down into Grindleford, up through, back up Padley Gorge, and that'll be our day hike, if it goes to plan. <laughs> it would be nice if it did stop raining, but hey, this seems to be a common theme every time Steph and I meet up. <laughs> I'll come back to you in a bit. So on closer inspection, there is ever so just a tiny, tiny bit of condensation. Not a lot, not a lot at all. Um, it's not causing drips or anything, so that's good. And on the whole, yeah, I'm impressed with that. The inner is dry, can't complain. Hello, good morning. Too bad. As it's raining and it could be very wet and muddy, I've decided to put on the waterproof socks today. These are my snazzy otter socks, and uh, yeah, they're pretty comfortable. Um, it can make my feet sweat quite a bit, but they do give me a bit of protection from any any wetness that gets through my boots. My boots are only really water resistant rather than waterproof, but I'm okay with that. That's all my kit packed away, with the exception of the tent. Oh, the joys of packing away a wet tent. And the wet tent I will attach to the outside of my pack. Um, but this is a bag that I use when I go wild camping. It's an Osprey Kite, 66 litres. It's a women's fit rucksack. If I'm honest with you, I don't really need 66 litres. As you can tell by the, the, the brain or the, the lid on top, there's plenty of room in there. The only time I ever seem to really fill it up is when I'm doing a winter camp and I've got my four season down sleeping bag. <clears throat> and that's quite big and it takes up probably more than half the space inside, even when I've compressed it. But for these sorts of camps, when it's milder weather, um, I've got loads of space in there. I did try to fit everything into my 36 litre pack, but it was just too much of a faff. I think for this kind of time of year, maybe something like a 45 litre would be ideal, but this does the job. I'm not going to spend money unnecessarily and I don't mind it. It's comfortable. I've had it for a couple of years now and it's quite a good pack. Um, I might do a, a proper in-length, in-depth video on it at some point. Um, it's, it's, a good, it's a good pack. It served me well. It's never failed me. And as you can see, I've got my little trusty uh, mascot there, Barnabas the sheep. Say good morning, Barnabas. Ah. Um, my friend Snay bought me that. <laughs> From the visitor centre at Derwent Water um, last year and it just sits on my backpack all the time. It's cute isn't he? Do you have a mascot? Do you have any uh, little things that you take with you just to, for a bit of fun when you're going on your hikes and your camps? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. And here's my sorry looking tent. The bit that I've been putting off that I need to do, get it packed away. That's it folks, we're all packed away. Remember, leave no trace. Steph and I have done a little bit of a litter pick because when we got here yesterday, there were some sweet wrappers and tissues in various different places. So we've actually left the place better than what we found it in. And uh, yeah, just another little check, make sure there's nothing there. And um, the only thing that remains is some flat grass that will pop up a little bit later today. So that's it. I'm gonna conclude the video there. Um, reason being is the walk that we're doing today, I've already done a video on that walk, which I will leave at the end of this video on a card. So if you want to see where I'm going, check out that card for Burbage Rocks. Um, that's where we're, we're heading later. And in that video, you might actually get some views. Haven't really got much to show you, I'm afraid. But thank you for uh, following me on this little adventure. And if you haven't done so already, do check out Endurance Adventures. That's Steph's channel. Give her a thumbs up, give her a sub. She'll really appreciate it. And I'll see you lovely ladies and gentlemen and people on another adventure very soon. Take care, go well. Bye bye.
this morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first word.